That's so deep because it makes me think about how like certain vices or certain things can be like even used in great moments. You know what I'm saying? Like it could be something as simple as you're drinking when you're sad, but now you've trained yourself to drink when you make an achievement. So you achieved a big sales week. So now you're drinking. So now even when you're not upset, yes. you're drinking when you're happy now. So it's a trigger when you're happy. It's a trigger when you're sad. And it's just like, wow, it's, it, you're b- burning the end on both candles. And, and it's really powerful. I wanted to ask you, like, what is um, a step that we can take to move forward into breaking a bad vice? Like, does it have to be something that's somewhat similar to the vice that you had? Like if the vice was drinking, they could be drinking something different or it does it matter if it's in the similar like area? Right. It can be totally different. It's just looking for another way of coping Uh, Another way of and a part of it may also be acknowledging what you're really feeling, because some of us run from our feelings. So we're using these other things, hooking up with random people, overworking uh, to distract ourselves. And so uh, it may be for some people, instead of having another activity, learning how to actually feel your feelings without Uh, being overwhelmed by them or fearing them, right? So it's like, instead of, okay, before I would, you know, do these random hookups. Now, instead, I'm going to get on a treadmill. Well, you still haven't really sat with the fact that you're grieving. So like, let the grief come. Mm. And uh, no, it's like a tide. Those emotions will rise. And we breathe through it. You might journal through it. You might talk to somebody through it. And then they will uh, decrease. So uh, I would encourage us to not just look for a new way to run from it, um, but to also face it. Are there any common vices that you find that people don't maybe see as vices? Like you just said, overworking, like. I know a lot yes. of people hearing that would be like, that's, that's not a like that. That's, that's good stuff. Like I'll just work hard. I work a lot, you know, right. Like, what are some things that people might not see as a vice that can be used to like escape, you know? Yes. Yeah. And that overworking, uh, it can cost us our relationships. Mm-hmm. It can cost us our health. Sometimes we are chasing something and then we get it and it's not even as fulfilling as we thought of what, you know, what we thought it would mean or, Uh, how we thought people would see us. And so uh, it's hard for some people to believe, but there are people with titles and money who are very empty. Mm. So getting clarity about what is it you actually desire, right? What would actually give you fulfillment? The other thing is when I'm constantly running like that, I'm actually not healed, right? Mm. So busy is not the same thing as healed. And people can think that you must be fine because you're functioning. uh, But if they saw you at midnight, they may think something else uh, that the the woundedness uh, shows up in different ways. It can show up in us in our parenting. We might be super harsh or we might be checked out. It may show up in our romantic relationships. It may show up in how we manage or don't manage our money. It may show up in our homes uh, with clutter. Right. So super productive, but like living in mess. And so it's like, what is the message I am telling myself about my own worthiness? Uh, So not only is busyness one that's often overlooked, uh, people often also overlook if you are a, a people pleaser. And that's an unhealthy coping strategy. But people love it. Right. Other people love it because you ignore yourself. You deny your own needs and you look out for everybody else. So like who wouldn't love a friend like that, a family member like that, a partner like that. Um, But it is neglecting yourself as you are doing that. And so learning that you are worthy of the care you're so desperately seeking to give other people. You feel like caregivers can have a similar thing like you're trying to fix other people's problems so you don't have to fix your own like it's uh, that very much people can avoid their own issues by focusing on everybody else's so it is very important uh that you have support right that each of us have support so for example as a psychologist when i'm meeting with other people 
that's and during that session, I'm focused on them, but I have to have areas in my life, relationship in my life where I focus on myself else I'm or else I am just perpetually avoiding myself. So I would say for mental health professionals, for nurses, doctors, uh, care providers, uh, ministers, social workers, uh, it's really important that you not neglect yourself. And 